Hey everyone, and uh, welcome back. So what we're going to be doing now is adding some logic to be able to have our tanks spawn at one of the random, you know, flag points, and it's going to choose another random flag point to go to the other one. So it's more about string concatenation and, and kind of a little bit of uh, clever uh, flow work more than it is about navigation uh, directly. But I think it's going to be very useful for you to uh, both learn these things as well as kind of see um, how dynamic uh, this, this nav mesh can be, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and get started and uh, let's jump into our level flow. So here we are in our, um, in our level flow, okay? And what we have is basically a whole bunch of variables that we're using here. We have the flag zero and we have goal zero, we have flag one, goal one, flag two, goal two, etc. So the first thing we need to do is uh, generate some random numbers, okay? So let's go ahead and, uh, and do that. Um, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is, is, of course, have some sort of an input. And here we're using the right mouse button. So let's move that down and let's go ahead and use the left mouse button. So we're gonna go input, mouse button and we're going to choose the left mouse button okay and this is what's going to be our event that's going to go ahead and generate our random uh, number okay or two random numbers really okay so uh, now what we need to do is go ahead and add a sequence node because sequence nodes are very useful for keeping things organized so we're going to go ahead and start with a flow control and sequence and this is just a good uh, practice to always come out of your button pressed into a sequence. So as you start adding more and more content, you have a way to keep it organized, all right? So now what we wanna do is um, set a numeric variable, okay? So we're gonna go variable, set numeric variable, okay? And we're gonna call this uh, spawn number, okay? So numeric, and actually, I'm sorry, we wanna grab the name, and we're gonna call this spawn num. Okay, so that's going to be our spawn number, and this variable is going to hold that spawn number. Okay, so now what we want to do is go math, random, random numeric. Okay, and that's going to generate us a random number. Now we could just connect it to here, but because we need to make sure that it's like zero or one or two and not like, you know, 0.75 or point, you know, one nine nine two two seven, right? We need to make sure that this is going to be rounded to a real number, okay, or a whole number. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the round function. So under math, numeric, round, okay, and this is going to make sure that it stays as a whole number, okay. So we're going to go into there like that. So instead of going directly in, we're going to go from random numeric. We're going to hit round. And then we're gonna, um, you know, round it to a to a value, and then we're gonna spawn, uh, you know, create our, our spawn number. Okay. Now, our uh, numeric input is going to be looking for a min and a max. Okay. So our min in this case is going to be zero because flag zero is our lowest number, and same with goal zero, right? So zero is our lowest. So we want to make the zero as our min. Okay. And then for our max we want to say six, okay? So that's our highest number of flags that we're going to go to. All right, so we're going to make that six, okay? And that's going to generate our number that we're going to use uh, when we um, go ahead and do this, okay? So let's go ahead and copy all this again and paste it. And now what we're going to do is generate the, um, the goal number, okay? So we're going to call this goal num. Goal num, okay? And we're going to go out to the set, out to the set, okay? And let's just go ahead and encapsulate this in a group. And let's call this uh, generate random spawn and endpoint numbers. Generate random spawn and end point numbers, okay? Because that's exactly what we're doing. What happens if you know the random number is five and the random number is five, right? Well, we're gonna start and we're gonna end in exactly the same place so the tank won't move at all, right? And that's not gonna be very fun. Uh, we wanna make sure that we test to ensure that those numbers never are the same, okay? So let's go ahead and do that logic now. So this is gonna be a, a touch more complicated, but not too bad, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, get our spawn number so we're going to go variable get numeric variable okay and we're going to 
call this spawn num. Okay, and we're going to get our goal number, right? So variable, get numeric variable, and we're going to set this to goal number. Okay, and now what we want to do is compare them. Okay, we want to make sure that they're not equal, right? So we're going to go ahead and go uh, flow control, and we're going to go compare objects. Okay, and this is just going to give us the opportunity to see if they are equal. So if one is equal to one, then it's going to be equal and it's going to travel through here. And if it's unequal, well, then we don't need to do anything, right? We're just going to have this unequal, not connected to anything. But anytime that they're equal, they're going to travel through this equal thing, okay? So we're going to connect that to our compare. And now what we need to do is just kind of make sure that our equal is equal, right? Now, there's two cases in this situation, right? It could come through here as equal and be less than six, or it could be six. Now, six is going to be a special thing because we're going to just basically add to our um, to our variable. So let's do the top part first, okay? So if it's equal, we need to do another compare. So what we're going to do is we're going to go math, I'm sorry, uh, flow control, compare numerics. And the nice thing about the compare numerics is it gives us not only just if it's equal or unequal, it gives us less, less or equal, equal, greater or equal, or greater. Okay, so in this case, what we want to do is test our uh, spawn num. So we're just going to copy the spawn number and paste it. And we're just going to do it on one side of the equation because all we have to do is adjust one of them. We don't need to adjust both. Okay, uh, so we're just going to grab that spawn number and we're going to test if it's equal to six. Okay, and if it's equal to six, then we're going to do one thing, right? Basically set it to one or generate a new number. Uh, if it's less than six, well, then we can just add a number to it to go ahead and, um, and continue onward. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go set numeric variable or variable set numeric variable. And we're gonna come out of our less or equal, okay? I'm sorry, if it's a uh, less, right? So if it's less, um, then what we wanna do is go Grab our spawn number. Oops. Delete that. Copy and paste. And we're going to take the spawn number. And all we're going to do is add a number to it. So we're going to go math, numeric, addition. Okay. And we're going to connect that to A. And we're going to just add it by one. Okay and connect it. So that'll ensure that our, our numbers are not the same. So basically what this is saying is, are these two equal? Yes, they're equal. Okay, cool. So then we know if, that they're equal. But if they're equal, then we need to know if it's equal to six. If it's not equal to six, right, then we're just going to go ahead and add one to the number. So let's say it was five, um, then the goal number is five and the spawn number is five because they're equal, right? So then we're just going to add one to the spawn number. So now we're going to be going from five to six. That's basically the idea here, right? And we're just going to put a name in here and the name is going to be spawn number, right? So we're just adding one to the spawn number. So whatever the spawn number was, we're adding one to it and resetting that value, okay? So like I said, if this was you know, anything between one through five, it's going to go ahead and it's going to be less than six. And therefore, we're just going to add one to the spawn number and call it a day, right? Now, if it's equal, then we can't add one to it because then it runs out of range of our flag six, right? If this was equal to six and we added one to it, then it's going to be seven. Well, that's not going to be a number we can use for our, 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 our variables, right? So we need to make sure that it stays within range. So what we're going to basically do is um, just generate a new random number. So let's go ahead and go random numeric. So we're going to go math, numeric, random numeric, right? I'm sorry, uh, random, random numeric. Okay, so now we've got our random numeric. And here we're just going to set the min to zero and the max to five. Okay, so if it was six, well, then we can only be between zero and five to be to make this work. Okay, so um, and we're just going to again do our uh, math numeric round. 
Okay, because again, whenever we generate a random, it's going to give us any number between zero and five, including non-whole numbers. So we want to make sure that it's a whole number, and then we're just going to reset the spawn value, right? So a spawn number is going to be equal to a random between zero and five. So if, you know, goal number and spawn number are equal, and they're equal to six, then we're going to go ahead and set the spawn number to somewhere between zero and five. We're going to round it to make sure that it's a whole number, and then we're going to reset the spawn number, okay? And that's what we're going to do if it is equal to six, okay? So now we have a very simple way of controlling those numbers and making sure that they are going to go ahead and not be equal to each other, okay? So let's go ahead and group this and let's go ahead and give it a name. So we're gonna go ahead and say, check if spawn and end are the same. If so, regenerate random spawn number. Okay, so now what we have is a spawn number and a goal number that are not gonna be equal. Okay, so what we need to do now is generate uh, the strings from those uh, numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is generate the spawn uh, position. Okay, so let's go ahead and set a string variable. So this string variable is going to hold the name of our spawn position. Okay, so we're going to call it uh, my spawn position, my underscore spawn position actually we can just call it pause okay so we'll go my spawn pause right for position and now we're just going to copy that oops i'm sorry we don't want to use a get string variable we want to use a set string variable you know what? we might as well just keep that on screen and move it out of the way let's go ahead and go variable set string variable which is what i meant to do so set string variable and this one is going to be called my string my uh, spawn pause right so this is gonna be my spawn position okay and that's all we need for that and what we're gonna do is go um, so the idea now is that we're gonna set a string called um, my spawn position and it's gonna be equal to this goal okay so we're gonna be looking for this goal uh, name okay that's what we're trying to do is build that name for that okay so how we're going to do that is with a tool called concatenate. So under utilities, under string, we can find this uh, function called concatenate. And this will allow us to concatenate two strings, okay? So um, to do that, all we have to do is go um, in here, we're going to put goal underscore, and we're going to concatenate or add together to this string uh, the number, right? So we're going to go variable, get numeric variable and uh, this one is going to be our spawn number right because we're looking for the spawn position right so we're going to be calling this uh, spawn num from up here okay now we can't just connect this blue to this red right because this is a number and that's a string right so we need to make sure that this is a string before we can connect it so we have a tool to convert and we're going to go convert numeric to string, okay? And by doing a convert numeric to string, we can now take this number and plug the string into the string. So this is going to say, all right, you were a number. It was number one, right? And we're going to convert it to a string, which is now going to be the same thing. It's still going to be one, but now it's in string form, not a number. Um, and that string is going to get added to this. So we're now going to have goal, let's say, let's say our spawn number is randomly generated as five. It's now going to say goal underscore five. Well, guess what? Goal underscore five is right here, which is a vector variable, right? So now we can call that vector variable very easily. Okay. So that's what we're going to be doing. All right. So string. And now this, my spawn position is going to be equal to if that number was five, as it was generated, is gonna be equal to goal underscore five, right? So that's the idea here. So we've done a little bit of string funness to, um, to kind of concatenate uh, some text. And now we have a really easy way to generate new names uh, from random numbers.
Okay, so uh, we're going to do this for all three of our necessary parts. So group, and let's call this uh, spawn main. Okay, so we've generated our spawn name there. All right, now we're going to do exactly the same thing. So we might as well just copy and paste. We can actually grab the whole group and paste that over to there. And we can rename this one to our goal name. Goal name, All right? So now we've got our goal name being generated. And this is going to be Instead of spawn number, we're going to be using our goal number, right? Because remember, we made a goal number as well. So here's our goal number. And instead of getting the spawn number, we're going to get the goal number. Okay, so now we've got the goal number. Now the goal number, whichever that is, let's say it was three, is going to get uh, turned into a string. And it's now going to be goal underscore three. Right. And that's going to be not in spawn position, but in my goal position. Right. OK, so now we've got our goal. And the last thing we're going to want to do um, is do our, um, our our unit name. So before we were not supplying this goal unit, but we're going to start to supply that goal unit now. OK, so we need to know what that unit is. OK, so let's go ahead and copy this one more time because it's really the same function that we're doing. And only this time we're still going to be using the goal number um, and we're still going to be using, uh, you know, the same the same number. But we need to change this to flag. OK, because up here flag is the starter. Right. So we're going to have flag underscore zero flag underscore one. And this is going to be the actual unit. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Change this to flag underscore. And now we've got the flag being generated, right? So now we know what that flag is, and this is just going to be our unit name. Okay, and we need to change this position to my flag. Okay, so it's not going to be my goal position, it's going to be my flag. And we can hit OK. All right, so now we're going to have one string called my spawn position that's going to contain the name of our goal. We're going to have a goal position that's going to contain the name of our goal, and it's going to have a flag, uh, my flag, which is going to contain the actual unit uh, variable. Uh, that we're going to be calling uh, later on. Okay, so now that we have all those done, we can just group these and we'll call this uh, generate spawn and goal variables, right? Actually, we should be spawn goal and unit variables. OK, so now we've got those done and all we have to do now is connect it. So we're going to connect this to here, connect this to here and connect this to here. So in sequence, we're going to first generate the random number. Then we're going to go ahead and make sure that they're not equal. And if they are equal, we're going to do a little bit of math to make sure that they're not. OK, and then we're going to go ahead and generate numbers from I mean, uh, variables from those uh, those strings. OK, so we're just going to be doing a little concatenation and rebinding them into a new string. And once we have that name, now we can do the same thing that we did down here, which was, you know, this movement test. Instead, we're just going to copy it and paste it. And it's going to be basically the same thing. OK, so here we were going into goal three. Well, let's get rid of this goal three. Let's get rid of this goal one. OK, and instead, all we're going to be doing is supplying a new variable. So we're going to go add node variable, get vector variable. And we're going to plug this vector into here. And where before we were supplying it a direct name, instead, we're going to supplying it, be supplying this name with that variable. OK, so we're going to go ahead and say add node. Actually, we can get it from over here. So this is just the get string variable. If you didn't have that still, you could go variable 
get string variable and you're just going to be filling it with my spawn position or my underscore spawn underscore pause right and when we connect that to here we're now going to be supplying it with whatever this string is filled with which is going to be goal underscore the spawn number right perfect it's going to work great now we're just going to copy this again paste it over here and we're going to take this vector and put it into the destination. And this one is going to be my underscore goal pause. So my underscore goal underscore pause. And we're pretty much done here. So let's move this out. Let's move this out. And before we go ahead and finish up, uh, we just need to do a couple last things. We now want to call this uh, something slightly different um, because it's... Uh, you know, the same as what we had below. So let's go ahead and say spawn and move tank. Or spawn and move tanks. Uh, yeah, that'll be okay. And just so that it's not the same as the simple movement test, I also want to fix the simple movement test that it doesn't have this awkward character. And lastly, we just want to get rid of this mouse button and connect it instead to the mouse button that's coming from up here. So I'm just gonna grab this eight and plug it into spawn, okay? And the reason I'm using eight is simply to make it a little cleaner so that when I go ahead and move this kind of like that, it, it just, it looks a little neater. Uh, you could really put it into any of these outputs. It doesn't make any difference, okay? So uh, that's pretty much gonna do it, okay? So let's go ahead and save all and let's give this a test. All right, so let's go play and we can now click and generate our tanks from random locations to random locations. Okay, now there's a couple things I want you to notice. Uh, the first being that when the tanks make a turn, I want you to see how sharp and angular their turns are. Okay, which is really kind of unfortunate, right? It doesn't look very good when the tanks are so, you know, harsh of a turn, right? Like when they're turning, they're just very, very harsh. And as you can also see, our tanks are just kind of sitting at the end point um, and not really going anywhere. So in, in, in our fourth lesson, we're going to get rid of those tanks when they reach the goal. Uh, but the thing we're going to fix right now is the fact that our tanks are making these really harsh angular turns, which is not very appealing, right? Like watch this tank when it turns. You're going to see it, it like snaps to a left position, right? There it goes, bam. Right, super hard snappy turn, okay? So we might want that to be a little bit more smooth, right? So to do that, uh, all we have to do is select our bot over here. So I'm just gonna grab that bot unit. And under this GW nav bot configure, we're gonna tab that down and we're gonna go underneath our uh, spline trajectory. So here we have spline trajectory. Below that is gonna be uh, nav tag layers and underneath that, we're going to have this use channel, okay? So we want to make sure that use channel is turned on, okay? It's a little obscure, but just be aware, the use channel is going to make it use the spline trajectory, okay? And we're going to go ahead and go file, save all, save selected. And now when we hit play, we're going to find that our tanks are making nice smooth turns. I'll just put a whole bunch of them on screen. And we should see that they're now not making that harsh turn, but instead are following a nice curved path. Beautiful. Okay, so that's going to conclude this lesson. Um, and we will continue on the next lesson where we will be making these tanks uh, disappear when they reach their goal. All right, and then we'll call that pretty much a done deal for this uh, tutorial. All right, uh, see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.